aware about flipping Kanye, 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 Kanye West, my absolute idol, my king, my North Star, the guy that I absolutely adore and love, has been going on an absolute tangent over the last couple of days. Isn't it? And it feels like the main thing that he's been complaining about has been his kind of um, butting of heads with some of the people higher up at Gap. Because as you guys know, he's got that whole Yeezy Gap collection that he's doing, engineered by Balenciaga, where his mission is to basically bling bling it's to basically bring high quality basics to um the wide po- the wider population right he wants to be able to dress people in clothes that he thinks are quote-unquote luxurious but at a somewhat affordable price point so he's obviously um wants to do that and there's no better partner to do something like that than gap and gap is a is a high street brand that he's always been infatuated with i think if you listened to kanye from before then you know that he's always ranted and raved about wanting to be the creative director of gap and he's given a really really great opportunity to basically do what he wanted to do at Gap and so far the clothes have been a real success they've sold out all the time everyone that's worn them has spoken how highly of the quality I watched some reviews of people who bought them online and they really like them blah 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 but I guess in recent months or weeks he's had some issues with people in the executive board of Gap or people with the, involved in the decision making of Gap in terms of how they're rolling out the product, what products available, whether they do fashion shows. It was like a really funny viral clip that went, you know, somewhat viral online where he's basically shouting at all these white people um, about how terrible they are, their jobs, and why they should listen to him in terms of, you know, getting Gap where it should be, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I guess that whole conversation didn't go well or something. Or maybe he's just a bit, a bit, you know, he's a bit um, tender about the whole thing. But I do have a fear in it because I think this whole thing kind of ties into it. So off the back of that, he then went on t- on his Instagram and decided to post all these, you know, mad posts about stuff, you know. The first one being this post that he highlighted where he accused a company called Los Angeles, what's it called? Los Angeles Apparel of essentially selling unreleased um, Yeezy products, stuff that hasn't been maybe released to the public or things that are in development, blah, blah, blah. If I'm not mistaken, unreleased, sorry, Los Angeles Apparel might be, um, it might be the company from the founder of American Apparel. I'm pretty sure that's what the company is because I'm sure they make blanks and maybe that's who Kanye had basically, you know, um, partnered up with. I'm not really too sure. But anyway, that's the vibe, right? So he complained about that. Then out of nowhere, so he's just him complaining, he's complaining with Gap about how they're rolling out the products and he's not happy of what they're doing and he's shouting at the executive board. Then out of nowhere, this, this Instagram caption comes out where he says the following, my kids go into Donda. They're not going to Sierra Canyon. Charlemagne the God and Chris, get your motherfucking popcorn. So essentially, if you're not familiar with Kanye speak, he is talking about Donda being his school that he's basically trying to set up. And I think the, the picture here basically relates to it, right? This is the first session, I guess, the Dove's first day at Donda, right? So basically he wants to have his own version of school where he teaches kids, I guess, practical skills or whatnot. I don't know, how some beat match, who, who fucking knows? But essentially he's, like, he's not happy with his kids going to a very popular private school out there in LA called Sierra Canyon. And then I guess mentioning Sierra such time in the gold because he knows he's somebody that maybe doesn't like the things that he says and someone very prominent in the media and obviously Chris being Chris Jenner. So this really, if you think about it, has nothing to do with what's his argument with Gap, right? This is a completely different conversation. I'm not sure why he's talking about his kids, but I was thinking to myself today that maybe the reason why Kanye is doing this and flipping out from going from arguing with the people at Gap about how they're releasing his Yeezy Gap Benzlenciaga collection to suddenly now attacking the mother of his children, attacking Chris Jenner, going after anybody else he wants to go after. I think the reason why this is this has happened is because Kanye can't handle it when people say no to him. Like he clearly doesn't like people saying no. But I think in general, his reaction to this sort of stuff is proof that he doesn't really have enough people around him who do push back in the way that an executive would. Because an executive that works with Gap, right? Imagine you're a middle, middle road, what do, what's the thing called? You're a middle management executive or you're a high level executive over at Gap. You're on the Gap board. Um, you do business a certain way. It's not innovative. It's not interesting. It's not thought provoking. It doesn't move the needle in any way, shape or form, but you always get your bonus at the end of the year. You always get paid at the end of the month or at the, the end of the month. Uh, you have a good company card. The perks are pretty decent and the, the machine just keeps rolling on. 
Now this Kanye West guy comes up and he wants to use to blow up the entire thing. He wants you to put clothes, as someone says, in bin bags and a shop floor. He wants you to do fashion shows. He wants you to do TV commercials. He wants you to put more money into the company that you've ever seen put into the company and potentially risk taking away your ability to go on a skiing holiday or to put your kids through private school. So of course, if you're an executive, you're probably not going to respond too well to this guy who you don't really know because you're a fucking 70 year old white dude telling you how to do your job. So you're going to say no and you're going to push back. But Kanye being Kanye, he hasn't really heard people ever push back at him. So I think this reaction he's having is just because he's heard people say no. Someone told him no or someone gave him, what you call it? Someone gave him the, maybe we'll see. Let's let's kind of circle back. You know those kind of business terms. Let's circle back on this. Um, let's touch bases next week. All those kind of terms where you, which you're basically saying no. And he can't, he doesn't know how to compute, he doesn't know how to process the fact that people are not um, basically bending over backwards to work with him. And like I mentioned, I think, earlier on my Twitter, that it's really interesting that, hey, hey, um, Jess Fury, big up Jess Fury in the chat. It's really interesting, I think I mentioned on my Twitter, that whenever Kanye goes off on these really kind of unhinged rants that he does, right, where he attacks everybody, it's really interesting how no one within his friendship circle who are so quick, the same people who are so quick to post pictures of themselves at, you know, Kanye's album listening party or when he's putting together a collection of the years, he's showing themselves behind the scenes or when they get new stuff sent ahead of time, blah, 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 blah. All those same people who are really quick to kind of show off to the world that they're friends to Kanye, they are in- incredibly silent like crickets whenever he goes on these rants that where he attacks his family, attacks other friends and businesses, like they don't say a word. They're nowhere to be seen. Which goes to show, you know, that's basically how the industry is, right? It's all a clout game. They love him for the clout when things are going right and positive and he looks good. But when he kind of looks quote unquote bad or when it's not good for business, they are suddenly nowhere to be found. But anyway, what what can we do? The other tweets are really, really funny anyway. So I find it funny in general, but I just also find it a bit sad because he clearly doesn't have any real people around him, to be honest. But hey, what can you do? I guess that's maybe um, the price you have to pay for being such an uber genius, right? You don't really have real friends because essentially everyone around you needs to extract something from you because you're such an uber genius. So whatever. Um, Then we get this other screenshot where you can see a bubble just above that's been cut off a little bit that says, we can make out, that says, can you please stop? And we have to assume that's probably Kim, right? Because from the other exchanges we've seen of them together um, over Texas, she tends to not write that much to him. And usually the Texas that she does write to him contains the word stop, can you chill, relax, call me, all those kind of things. So I would assume it's Kim. And then Kanye replies back, no, we need to talk in person. You don't have to, you don't have say so of where the kids go to school. <laughs> why get say, why you get say say? Cause you half white. <laughs> honestly the fact that Kanye is attacking and somewhat bullying the mother of his children online for all of us to see off the back of him having an argument with people at Gap head office is incredibly funny to me I find it so funny there's nothing that correlates this whatsoever Kim and the kids have done nothing right they've not affected Gap in the slightest right but he has somehow decided to get the fucking AK-47 out and absolutely spray everyone with bullets. Everyone's getting it today. Everyone. But yeah, like the no, the we need to talk in person, like, because you're half white, why you get say-say, like, this guy is legitimately funny. Legitimately funny, right? And then he posts this other picture. Now, I don't know who this is because this looks very face-tuned. Is this meant to be Kim? I guess this is Kim, right? But I don't know who it is. Maybe it's somebody else. But he posts a picture of this white lady. And then the caption says, don't let Chris make you do Playboy like she made Kyle. Kylie, I guess is meant to say, and Kim do. Hollywood is a giant brothel, he's saying, right? Hollywood is a giant brothel. Here's this guy saying, Hollywood is a giant brothel. Pornography destroyed my family. I deal with the addiction. Instagram promotes it. Not going to let it happen to Northie and Chicago. Absolutely crazy pornography destroyed my family is absolutely hilarious because i think in the last few weeks or stuff i've seen way more people on social media um random people who i don't know and don't follow um essentially 
uh, sharing their experiences of how beneficial it's been to quit porn, right? To quit watching porn, to stop masturbating and stuff like loads of people have been showing have been doing that really funny before after picture thing where one side looks really d down and distraught and hollowed eyes and cheeks all weird and you know look like they've been drinking for 17 million years and the other person looks really bright, optimistic and ready to attack the world. But if you read the comments, a lot of guys are saying that porn legitimately is a real addiction for some people and it can be really destructive i've never really found that um issue to be honest um because i've never really porn's just been always the means to an end right it's always been kind of a means to an end to kind of get get myself off and stuff i've never really been that um tied up in it in terms of downloading porn or knowing porn stars names or going to conventions i don't know it's never really been that deep for me if i can't find it free on like a website or on reddit i just keep it moving it's not that big of a deal um but i guess for some people it is but to say that porn destroyed his family is absolutely insane. As if like he's now ascribing, um, he's now basically in, indirectly calling Kim a porn star. And he's also calling Kylie or whoever Kyle is a porn star too, which is absolutely wild. If you think about it, ridiculously wild. <laughs> right. But anyway, and the caption of this, I don't know who this person is, but hey, some lady. Then there's another post here from some person called Monica, who's clearly trying to suck Kanye's dick, who's saying, thank you. I want to stop doing OnlyFans and do cons do consultation for fashion full time or something. Whoever this person is, is just begging it. But again, Kanye must have a lot of these people in his orbit. Then he posts this. This is really funny. Syria Canyon, Gap, Adidas. It's up. Hillary and Mark blocking me. I don't know who Hillary, I don't know who Mark is. Hillary is obviously Hillary Clinton. I don't know who Mark is meant to be. Then we continue another post here. Again, it's kind of just, this is just all in recent time. This is really funny. He says, God loves us, right? Um, yeah, this is God loves us. And if I'm not mistaken, this has to be Chris Jenner, right? How, how, how old, let's check this. How old is Chris Jenner? Yeah, it is Chris Jenner. Okay, cool. It has to be. I was thinking, who is this person? So it's Chris Jenner, right? This lady, right? So in the screenshot, it says the following. This is fucking hilarious. From my mum, please. So we can obviously assume this is definitely Kim again. It says, please tell him to stop mentioning my name. I'm almost 67 years old and I don't always feel great. And this stresses me to no end. Only a, only an LA mum or an only an LA person, right? An LA person who's that age would like, yeah, sorry. Let me rewind again. Only someone from LA would phrase something in this way imagine being 66 years old but when you're talking about yourself you say i'm almost 67 it's like saying it's like when a kid is like oh i'm i'm like um three quarters of the way to 18 or something you know those kind of like really ditzy bimboy type things to say i'm almost 67 no you're either 66 or you're 67 who says that like a, a grown-up who says i'm almost 67 it's such a, I know I'm nitpicking, but it's such a, a specific thing that maybe makes you think, okay, these people are definitely from LA. They definitely live in a bubble and they definitely are not, you know, are, no, are in no way self aware, um, of the world around them at all whatsoever. Um, anyway, da, da, da. and then Kanye replies back to Kim telling him his mum, Kim telling him that his mum is telling him to chill, um, that, that her mum's telling him to chill. He says, y'all don't have a say so over my black children and where they go to school <laughs> right they will not do playboy and sex tapes tell your clinton friends to come get me i'm here absolutely insane the funny thing about this is that from this text message i get the feeling in the same way some of these stand-up comedians love to go on the road because essentially they hate their family and they want to live like this kind of a Peter Pan life where they basically never get to grow up. So the best way to do it is to kind of go on the road and pretend that you're doing it for your family to put food on the table. But essentially you don't like your wife and you hate your kids or your partner, whatever it may be. I think this is a clear indication that Kanye 100%, aside from the sexual attraction he might have felt for Kim at one point, he legitimately hates that woman and her family. Like he hates them to his core. He hates them, hates them, hates them. And for me, being a Kanye fan, one of the things that I never really liked about them together was that Kanye, sorry, made it seem like she was a devil. But he willingly and actively 
sought her out. Like he was after, like if you believe the rumors and what he says himself, he fancied Kim for a long, long time. He was in love with her for ages before that, before they were even like together, right? He was really in love with her when they were with other people and whatnot. And he was kind of secretly hoping that they could end up getting together and they did. And they stayed together for a long time and he ended up, you know, popping out for four kids. And I always thought it was really unfair that he never, he loved her, but he didn't like how she was. Wanted to change her. It didn't work. And then now he tries to make it seem as if she's the worst thing that ever happened to his life. And it's like, that's not necessarily too fair, I don't think, in that regard. Like, a lot of people at the time, before he did hook up with her, were telling him not to do it. He didn't listen. He did it anyway because he's kind of US. He does what he wants. Then it doesn't work out. And now he's trying to say the same things that the crowd that was, the people that were watching from afar were saying derogatory to her. Like, I, I don't really like it personally for me. I think it's really, really in bad taste, especially with her being the mother of his children. But like I said, from these texts alone, I get the feeling that they're not, you know, there is no co-parenting going on there. You know, the, the security guard drops off the kids. Um, that's it. There is no love there at all in the slightest. There's no way of them getting back together. I don't see it in, a, in any way, shape or form because they're clearly at completely different points in their life and understanding and whatnot. But yeah, Kanye fucking hates Kim Kardashian and he also hates Kris Jenner. That much is true from what we're seeing here via these um, screenshots of these text messages. Then this next one is really fucking funny. This is um, Kanye uploading the following. Um, he zoomed in here. It says Tristan, Trav, and Cross. Uh, Scott, sorry. Tristan, I'm assuming that's Tristan who's married, who's with, um, sorry, Khloe Kardashian. Travis Scott being Travis Scott with Kylie. And I'm guessing Scott is Scott Disick. I'm assuming the other dude, right? Um, oh, I see, um, I see a super chat here, uh, from Good Robot. Is this just coming through? Yeah, it's just coming through now. Good man. What's good to you too, good robot, man? I appreciate the $5 super chat, brother. Big up, big up, big up, big up. So um, Kanye posts Tristan, Travis Scott, and then he says, calling my fellow cum donors, we in this together. So essentially, in a roundabout way, he's basically saying that we're, they're not actually fathers. They're not actually participating parents. They're essentially people who the Kardashian women decided they weren't to breed with because they'll give them mixed-race kids or attractive kids or kids with money. And that's it. They don't get any say so in how the the kids are raised, where they go to school, um, blah 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 blah. And best, and then he posts a screenshot of him searching for cum donors. <laughs> I love the fact that it says showing results for cum donors instead of cum donors. You know what I mean? Like Kanye can't even spell donor properly. That's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> and then the last one here to go on before we move on to the comedy stuff. Is Kanye posting um, this? Uh, I haven't okay. This is new. I haven't read this. So this is a caption. Says the following: "Y'all not gonna keep discriminating on me while the organizations use and use us all." So again, like I said, this has all been spurned off the back of him having a falling out with the people at Gap. He fell out with people at Gap because of whatever, and now he's attacking his whole family. And the quote here on the caption says as follows. Anybody that says I'm spiraling when I express my undeniable truths is a sheep. Shut the fuck up and worry about your own kids. Wow, this is Kanye talking, okay? I obviously am dealing with wars that are the highest level of control and discrimination based on the level of I'm operating at. A conductor got to turn their back to the audience who direct the orchestra. Oh, yay crazy. It's basic as fuck at this point. I'm simply right. I know girls who sell pussy that don't agree with how my daughters are displayed. Wow. Okay. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Honestly, this is a fucking hilarious. I love to see this in real time. You know, also, I love to see this in real time because, for, for, from again, me from an outside perspective looking in, the Kardashians do kind of carry themselves in some way, like their shit don't stink, right? They're trying to act a bit like high and mighty, like they're above us common folk. But I do love the fact that the majority of the Kardashian women are basically, you know, unmarried with baby daddies and have this real ratchet drama that surrounds them entirely when it comes to their relationship. It's not very sophisticated. It's not very suave. It's not very chic. It's just trailer trashy type stuff, innit? But they just wear really nice clothes and they look amazing. But that's it. It's no different to anything else you might see on some horrible TV show somewhere. Um, so yeah, Kanye, I love that he's blowing this all up and making this all bait. Obviously, for his family, it's not the greatest thing. But again, who gives a fuck? It's just funny to watch this stuff in real time. It's funny to watch this stuff in real time. What's people saying in the chat? They're saying here, um, uh, would you smash Kim, bruv? Of course, who wouldn't? Who wouldn't smash Kim? But, uh, 
that's not the issue at hand in it here. The issue at hand is that they're basically, Kanye's basically showing you that smashing Kim isn't what it's all cracked up to be because that entire family is like, you know, you don't get to be as rich as they are, successful as they are, and just kind of being like easygoing, take every day as it comes, la di da type people. You be that way by being absolutely ruthless, savage people behind the scenes who do just about anything and everything to maintain your sense of power, notoriety, fame, money, whatever it may be. And I think Kanye saw the darkness when he went there. He thought he could handle it, being the big bad Kanye West, and that whole entire family chewed him up and spit him back out with little to no regard. Do you know what I mean? Like really little to no regard um but hey what can you do what can you do 